Hi guys. On August 2nd, 1972, 8 months after the 13-day India-Pakistan war ended on December 16, 1971. The two countries signed the Simla Agreement under which India agreed to release all the 93,000 Pakistani prisoners of war. This proved to be a controversial decision with many in India questioning why Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had a global opportunity to bargain with Pakistan and settle the Kashmir problem based on India's terms. What motivated Mrs. Gandhi to release the POWs? What went on behind the scenes? On December 16, 1971, the day when Pakistan's armed forces laid down their arms at a Sarana ceremony in Dhaka. This was the finest hour in both India and Bangladesh Army's histories, one old and another new. However, as the two armed forces were celebrating their military victory, Mrs. Gandhi was thinking about other critical issues that India was facing. Apart from dealing with the enormous cost of the war, India also had to bear the financial burden of looking after the 10 million refugees who had crossed over to India from East Pakistan due to the notorious Bangladesh genocide of 1971. The unforeseen and unbudgeted responsibility of having to look after the 93,000 Pakistani soldiers taken as POWs. India wanted to keep the Pakistani soldiers in condition of comfort that went over and above the provisions listed in the Geneva Convention. Indira Gandhi's biggest concern at that moment of time was figuring out how to get Bangladeshi leader Sheikh Mujibir Rahman back to his country alive. So who is Mujib? Why Indian PM was concerned about him? Mujib was a Bangladeshi politician and a statesman. He is called the father of the nation in Bangladesh. He became a leading figure and eventually the leader of the Awami League founded in 1949 as an East Pakistan based political party in Pakistan. Mujib led the Awami League to win the first democratic election of Pakistan in 1970. On 26th March 1971, the Pakistani army responded to the mass protest with Operation Searchlight in which Prime Minister-elect Mujib was arrested and flown to a solitary confinement in West Pakistan. Less unknown thing is, his daughter, Sheikh Azina, is the current leader of Awami League and also the Prime Minister of Bangladesh. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was prepared to pay any price to save his life. For that, she needed a trustworthy person, at least one member of her so-called kitchen cabinet. That person was Ram Nath Khau, the research and analysis wing chief. Indira Gandhi aware of that fact that Mujib was tried by a Pakistani military court and a verdict of death by hanging on charges of treason. It would be a perfect nightmare for Gandhi and India, who supported the Bangladesh liberation struggle with its heart and soul, and his execution would be an unimagined disaster. Meanwhile, in Pakistan, President Yaha Khan took full responsibility for the national disaster and stepped down from his office. He asked Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, who was still in New York attending the United Nations Security Council meetings, to return home. Bhutto was also informed by General Yaha Khan that he had resigned from his office. He had appointed Bhutto as the Chief Martial Law Administrator of Pakistan. Bhutto's Washington to Rawalpindi flight was scheduled for a refueling stepover at Heathrow Airport in London. Having secured insider information about Bhutto's journey home, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi called an emergency meeting of the War Cabinet in New Delhi at her office in South Block. She wanted with the utmost urgency to secure a contact who would be present for Bhutto's arrival at Heathrow. So, she could get the only masterpiece of intelligence India was looking for. What did Bhutto think about Mujbigir Raghuman being sentenced to death by the Pakistani military court? The former chief secretary of the East Pakistani government, Muzaffar Hussain, 
the highest ranked civil servant posted in dhaka as of december 16 1971 who had subsequently become a pow in india his wife laila who was visiting london when war was broke out on december 3rd couldn't return home and was stuck there both husband and wife were communicating with each other through the diplomatic channels the indian prime minister was very much aware that laila and buto had been intimate friends for a long time and continued to be so it was felt at that pmo that she was well placed to play a key role in one of diplomatic summit at the vip launch the alcock and brown suit at ethro airport during the meeting at ethro airport laila's emotional appeal to help him getting her husband released from indian custody with a twinkle in his eye buto changed the subject and pulling her aside he whispered to laila a very sensitive top secret message from the indian prime minister sources from laila here i quote laila i know what you want i can imagine you are carrying a request from mrs indira gandhi do please pass a message to her that after i take charge of his back home i will release mujib raguman allowing him to return home so what i want in return i will let mrs indira gandhi know through an another channel indira gandhi was pleased that buto had sent out a positive message although it was done unofficially through a back channel however she remained suspicious of whether buto could be trusted the prime minister was cautiously optimistic but only just was buto trying to mislead india was he creating a false dawn with a mischievous motive she wanted a confirmation of laila's input from our diplomatic mission in pakistan as fast as possible meanwhile within hours a report came back from islamabad confirming the authenticity of laila's report at this point gandhi took matters in her own hands elevating the discourse from the bureaucratic to the political level buto had no option but to release mujib rahman first the pow's would come later obviously buto was relying on gandhi's sense of decency to not let him down it was starting to get clear that indira gandhi had made up her mind if buto personally asked her to release of the pow's she would not hesitate in agreeing to it a gesture of generosity must be met with a matching gesture of grace nothing less finally in a show of manufactured geopolitical generosity buto overruled the death sentence handed out by a military court in rawalpindi and released mujib raguman on january 8 1970 on his return mujib took charge as a prime minister of bangladesh on january 10 1972 India ordered the release of all 93000 POWs under the Simla agreement on August 2, 1972. The world had never known such decency in international relations as India's conduct with Pakistan on the POW issue. But the brutal assassination of Mujibur Rahman and his family 3 years and 8 months later on August 15, 1975. it seemed like the belated fulfillment of isis unfinished agenda for bangladesh his release from prison on january 8 1972 was merely a distraction from india's perspective his death was an absolute nightmare because he bargained pow's for mujib's life the kashmir problem remained unresolved pakistan eventually launched an unrelenting proxy war which has lasted 45 years and continues till this day thousands lost their lives the blood never dried the tears have never stopped flowing as we conclude with justice abu choudhury who later became the president of bangladesh wrote a letter dated december 16 1971 that he addressed to mrs indira gandhi warning her of dire consequences if she decided to go for an unilateral ceasefire 
on the Western Front. It would remain a half-finished business of the Bangladesh War. Its concluding the line was, when you chop off the tail of a cobra, its head becomes 10 times more venomous. But unfortunately, the letter has arrived on the Prime Minister's desk too late. If you want to know the final hours of 1971 Indo-Pakistan War, like what made the Pakistani chief Niazi to sign the instrument of surrender? What really made him to surrender? Like, who played the key role from India to make him surrender on the day? The 30 minutes bluff played by an Indian chief. You can check my previous video for that. Thank you. Jai Hind.